Everyone knows Pixar loves to fill their animated films with Easter eggs. Along with references to other Pixar movies, one of the more common Easter egg themes among the movies is The Shining. Let's take a look back at how The Shining has influenced Pixar through Easter eggs and then reflect on some of the bigger theories at play. Before you watch, click subscribe. You'll join our notification squad and be the first to know of new Screen Rant content. So play nice. Toy Story. Back in 1995, Pixar introduced us to their first feature-length film and a whole world filled with digital Easter eggs. Toy Story also wasted no time building a connected world between their films and The Shining. And the reference naturally fits into the story as Buzz and Woody get taken to the home of Sid, the punk kid who loves to torture toys. Well. It still remains one of the most commonly talked about Easter eggs in Pixar movies. The carpet pattern seen in Sid's home and upstairs hallway is the same pattern found on the floors of the Overlook Hotel in The Shining. The only difference between the two is the coloring, but the endless look of the hexagon carpet is the exact same. Much like Jack in The Shining, Buzz Lightyear suffers a psychological breakdown. Buzz's comes in the form of discovering he is a toy. The characters also encounter a number of haunting visuals, including the mutant toys Sid had created. The carpet was a great homage, but would prove to be just the beginning for Pixar's connection to The Shining. What are you talking about? You, mini man! Finding Nemo. One of the biggest connections between Pixar movies and The Shining is director, writer, and producer Lee Unkrich. Unkrich was an editor on the original Toy Story and moved on to direct Toy Story 2 and Monsters, Inc. before taking on the ambitious Finding Nemo in 2003. While Toy Story 2 and Monsters, Inc. didn't feature any direct Easter eggs to The Shining, the connections returned full form with the release of Finding Nemo. In the movie, Marlin and Dory encounter a group of sharks while on a quest to rescue Nemo. Fish are friends. Not food. The sharks claim to be reformed until they sniff a little blood and chaos ensues. During the epic shark chase, Bruce slams into a steel door, only opening it a crack. Placing one eye against the door, he exclaims, Here's Brucey! A clear reference to The Shining's Here's Johnny door scene. Here's Johnny! <laughs> While Ungrich may have gotten his Shining reference in, he clearly isn't finished with animated Easter eggs to one of his favorite movies of all time. Do you mind? <laughs> Coco. One of the more recent Pixar movies was Coco. When dealing with the land of the dead, a horror film like The Shining fits nicely. In The Shining, Jack carries around a signature axe he uses to haunt characters and torment his own family. Wendy, I'm home. The weapon was digitally recreated during a scene where Dante wakes up. The axe sits in a log in the background. Don't skip by the scene too fast, though, because right next to the axe is a red drum, more obviously known as red drum, or murder spelled backwards. <laughs> Danny's key catchphrase in the movie has made its way into a Pixar film in one of the most obscure ways. The final reference found in Coco is a painted image Miguel runs by in Frida's gallery. Look closely, and you'll spot a painting of the ghost twins Danny runs into during the movie. Forever. Ever and ever. We can imagine seeing them run around the land of the dead together. Sweet potato, who do you think you're talking to? Toy Story 3. While Toy Story had the Overlook Hotel carpet, things went a little crazy when it came to references in Toy Story 3. No, Woody wasn't opening an elevator full of blood, but there were many hard-to-miss references in the film. Early on, a garbage truck has the license plate reading RM237, a clear reference to the scary room Danny tries to avoid in the movie, but still has strong connections to. The room number is brought up again when Trixie uses an instant messenger and the screen name she communicates with reads Velocistar237. Oh, that's just a dinosaur toy down the street. The Sunnyside daycare janitor was even named Mr. Tony, a reference to Danny's imaginary friend and voice inside his head. It isn't real. The scene containing the most shining references involves the Sunnyside daycare security room where the clapping monkey watches over actions. <laughs> the name of the camera model is Overlook 237, referencing the hotel and the aforementioned room. The tissue box has the same pattern as the hotel's carpet. Even the microphone the monkey has is the same design and model as the two-way radio featured in the film. Now that we've covered all of the shining Easter eggs and references in Pixar movies, let's dive deep into a couple of theories associated with them, starting with a closer look at all the Toy Story 3 references. Completely unintentional. Toy Story 3, A Child's Remake 
Toy Story 3 not only features the most references to The Shining, but you could break down the plot of both films to have a much deeper connection. Essentially, Toy Story 3 could be viewed as a family-friendly version of The Shining. The Shining focuses on a family who takes a temporary residence while trying to escape the grasp of a madman and other hauntings at the hotel. In Toy Story 3, a group of toys are delivered to Sunnyside Daycare and become trapped as they try to escape the grasp of a madman, or in this case, a mad bear. The layers slowly start to peel away until everything blows out of control. While The Shining had the creepy twins, Toy Story 3 had Big Baby and his terrifying appearance on the playground swing in the middle of the night. Lotso Bear represents the tainted view of Jack. Lotso has become disenchanted to the life of a toy after he was abandoned by his original owner and replaced. He seeks out control, and much like the ghosts of the Overlook Hotel, Lotso relies on constant monitoring of the guests. This comes in the form of the security room and the clapping monkey. The use of the bear as the main villain itself serves a pretty big connection to The Shining. Bears are a common theme in the horror film, including images of stuffed toy bears, bear carpets, and a man dressed in a bear suit. The bear represents Danny's childhood and loss of innocence, much like Lotso Bear's journey into darkness after losing his owner. The maze at the end of The Shining is represented through the maze featured at the landfill in Toy Story 3. The main difference is the ice and snow of The Shining has been replaced with the fire of the landfill incinerator. As Jack's body freezes is in place, Lotso Bear gets frozen to the front of a garbage truck, destined to spend several years getting bugs and debris hitting his face. Whether Lee Unkrich meant to or not, he essentially created a children's version of The Shining. Maybe it was about Danny? Danny and Pixar's writing perspective. Another theory focused on Pixar and The Shining involves the character of Danny Torrance. Danny is a key part of the movie and his journey clearly had an impact on Pixar writers, producers, and animators. The theory involving Danny and Pixar includes a meta world where Danny actually exists and all of the films with references to The Shining are written from his perspective. Essentially, Danny has grown up and become a member of the Pixar writing staff. Movies, stories, and references are written from his meta perspective and his point of view. Danny Torrance experienced a lot of horror while staying at the Overlook Hotel with his family. Along with his father having a mental breakdown, Danny wandered the empty halls, saw visions of ghostly twins, and had to escape from his father in a truly terrifying hedge maze. Danny! In the end, he survived, but he would clearly grow up never forgetting the horrible experience. Red run! Using the infamous mantra, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, Danny grows up and mixes work and play, creating fun and exciting films in the world of Pixar as a writer and animator. Imagine the perspective of Danny, if he followed his father's mantle as a writer but took a more positive approach by focusing on children's animation. Clearly, the events at the Overlook Hotel are still impacting Danny's life as small moments and details pop up through the stories. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? The height of this occurs with Toy Story 3, a film filled with references to The Shining and a story that features similar plot points and themes. Naturally, Danny's horrific experiences get scattered and imprinted throughout the various productions. Pixar writers use this perspective to create their stories and place a lot more than just Easter eggs. The references are fragments of Danny's memory, and no matter how hard he tries to erase the past, it continues to be woven into the fabric of his mind. In the perspective of Danny, no matter how colorful and happy you make these digital stories, you can't escape the past and the events that occurred. The very first sign of this comes from the original Toy Story. Sid's house is full of horrors similar to the Overlook Hotel, and a quick look at the carpet showcases the same pattern, but different color scheme as the original film. And just like Jack's unraveling in The Shining, Danny's use of references in future films only seems to worsen as he goes. With murderous weapons and references to murder in Coco, we will see how how far Pixar pushes their limits when writing in the perspective of Danny and pushing the themes and references in future films. The influence of The Shining is undeniable. Keep a lookout on future Pixar films to see more references and re-watch all of the mentioned films to see how the theory fits and makes sense within the meta world. Wow, thanks for watching! What do you think of this theory? Are there any connections that we might have missed? Have you seen The Shining? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to Screen Rant on YouTube so you can stay up to date with our awesome videos.